Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Pola, a magnetic game by Blasterlight. This is a game that plays two players, but I believe there's a variant for four as well. It takes roughly about 10 to 20 minutes or so and it's for ages eight and up. And in the game Pola, you're going to be playing tic-tac-toe. But not just the regular tic-tac-toe you've known and loved as a child, but a more complicated, more magnetic, more 3D version of the game. You'll start with a center cube full of magnets placed on this board here, and then each player is going to be getting these X's and O dice. You'll be placing them down one at a time onto this little beginning tile here, or dice here, and you'll be constructing a uh, six-sided, die, basically a larger version of this, a three by three, uh, that is going to be having the X's and O's, and based on how you place, you'll be scoring across, uh, horizontally and vertically, trying to score points. But not only that, this game has some additions. In this game, you're going to be getting these dice here, and these are your action dice that you can use. You'll be gathering two of them each game you want to play, and they do unique abilities. Maybe they'll double your score on one side, or they will blow up a side, or maybe you'll score points in different ways that you normally wouldn't do in tic-tac-toe. When the die has been completed, or the big pola has been completed, the game will end. You'll calculate your score, and whoever has the most is the winner. Let's tell you how to set the game up, and then of course, how to play. To begin the game, go ahead and take the cube out of the box here and separate the two different colors. You'll have the dice that are white and the dice that are black. There are two separate types of dice, your basic dice and your action dice. Separate these guys and set them side by side for each player. Take the main little game board out and place the center die in the middle of it. The center die is a orange die that has magnets all around. Then, give each player the 13 dice of their color, which will be X's and O's. Next is going to be a draft round. A, a player is going to choose one of these dice here as an action die, and they'll be placing it in their pool of dice. And the next player will also get a chance to take an action die, as long as it's not the same die that the other player had taken. And you'll go back and forth up until I believe two or three of these have been chosen. And once that has happened, as long as you make sure they're not the same, then you're going to begin the game. You'll take away the extra action dice, you will not need them, give each player their main dice, and set up the board so that it's within easy reach of all players, and begin. Playing Pola, a magnetic game, is quite simple. Basically what's going to happen is you are going to start with this little cube here as the first player and you will take one of your die and you will place it on the cube so that it matches. You'll have to make sure that when you place it, there are little divots that you need to fit into the divots of the die you're placing. And once you've done that, you'll set it down and pass to the next player. And the next player will then take one of their dice and they will once again go ahead and try and place the cube so that it attaches. And then once again, the next player will go ahead as well. And you're basically going to be trying to form three in a row. And there's going to be a three by three on each side. And there's nine dice that's going to be forming each side. And you can score a number of ways going three in a row, either up, down, or uh, left, right, as well as, of course, side to side. And you'll just keep playing the game like that. It's really quite simple as you place these dice down, attaching them to this little uh, middle center cube here. Players will continue to grab new different color, or new different spaces on the die. And you can make, you have to make the, a basic die. You cannot go farther than that. Additionally, players can play action dice. Action dice have a variety of things that you can do with them, but they have rules to them as well. There is the cat, there's a rocket, there's a joker, there is a ghost, and there's a bomb, and there's a horse. And they all do various different things. The bomb, when placed in the center of one of the sides or walls of the cube here, is going to blow up that entire wall, meaning you cannot score it throughout the game. Uh, the cat is going to score, um, you'll have to place it in corners and it'll score perpendicular uh, to it. There's the rocket that does the same thing as the bomb, but instead of blowing up an entire wall, it doubles your points on it. There is the uh, joker. Uh, it's a wild and you'll have to choose one of the other dice that has been selected and you can kind of copy that ability. Um, and so on and so forth. There's a horse that you'll place in the bottom left or right or top left or top right that will score you if you make an L formation. 
And there, yeah, there's a wide, wide variety of different actions that you can take. But yeah, you're going to be taking these dice here and you're just going to be uh, creating a cube. And once everything is said and done, you should have a cube fully constructed. And you'll score each of the corners uh, and sides and all that of the dice, just like you would if you're playing a game of tic-tac-toe. But instead of on just one side, you'll score one, two, three, four, five, six different sides. And whoever has the most points is the winner of the game, Pola, a magnetic game. So this is what you should have left after a game of Pola has been completed. And it's very easy to score this game, which is pretty cool as well. But what you're gonna do is you'll take a look at each side and you'll see how many three in a row. So as you see, there's black that has two and there's white that has one here. And on the opposite end here, you have a white right here and a white right here. Over here, you've got a, a, a black that goes sideways and none for white. And then of course, a white that goes sideways and so on and so forth. And you see there's lots of ways to continue to score points in the game. And only that, but as you score each wall, you're gonna to wanna to take a look at each of the different unique action dice here that can score you additional points or prevent scoring at all. And I always suggest, make sure that you score these first before scoring any of the regular tic-tac-toe rows you would normally score in a game of tic-tac-toe. And then the game is over. After you've calculated all the points, whoever has the most points is the winner. So this game is relatively simple and straightforward as far as how to play. I think the main complexity of the game, uh, while yes, there's a lot of complexity as far as where you place, there's like kind of a chess nature to this game, um, but is making sure that you do not um, have this fall apart in your hands. And actually we've kind of done this house rule where if, if, if this cube falls apart in your hands while you're trying to construct it for any reason, uh, you are basically going to be out of the game. And so you have to make sure that as you build it, that the certain magnets will face a certain direction inside the cube, make sure that uh, the pieces, the divots uh, hold in together. And so it kind of adds this extra complexity of not only making sure you place the right location with the right piece, but also that you place the piece in the correct area of the placement that you are choosing. And so it has that kind of extra little nuance to it. Um, of course, there is the idea of trying to determine how you can score with a specific die on multiple sides of a wall. Sometimes you might think that placing in the middle is super valuable, but now you know that when you place on a corner edge, you can score for this wall, this wall, and this wall with just this one piece going up and down as well as sideways or diagonally. Uh, the base game recommends when you start playing the game for the first time to not utilize the action dice. And I would agree with that as well. However, if you are pretty well aware of these type of games, if you're more of a modern gamer, you could probably at least get into at least one of the action dice, if not doing a draft of them and simply playing the game as it is meant to be played. The component quality is excellent. The dice are very nice. It feels good in your hand to attach these to the cube itself. The game is straightforward and simple with the complexity being that as you continually progress and get better, you'll see better moves, what's a better placement, better locations based on how somebody else places. And you'll also want to be utilizing your kind of um, spatial reasoning. You want to focus on where I can place this piece that will garner me more value later based on where my opponent wants to place next. And it turns into this kind of high strategy abstract type of magnetic game. Speaking of which, it's also really cool that it is a magnetic game and the magnets uh, make this kind of thing uh, push together in unique ways and combinations. It's a visually stunning looking piece. Uh, I really like the idea that it's also good for visually impaired people. Uh, you can play this game by literally just touching the pieces and feeling them as to where they go on this uh, cube here. And so you'll know, okay, X's and O's, and most people have held a cube before, so you can play this um, if you have trouble seeing as well. Uh, that comes in a nice little box here, uh, but I'd probably be, be getting rid of this and just using this bag here where you can store this whole cube in, which will likely, oh, it stayed in there, okay. Um, and this will can hold just like this. You can carry this in your purse or backpack or bag or whatever, and it'll fit the entire game of Pola in here for you to take and travel with anywhere you would like. Um, yeah, overall, it's a fun game. This is an abstract strategy game that centers around the basic idea of tic-tac-toe. And for some of you, that might sound like kind of a boring basic concept, but this one takes it to a whole new level 
adds actions, uses different types of things like the rocket that doubles your score on one side, or instead of the rocket, you're using the bomb that stops scoring, so you can kind of net your opponent and like, hinder your opponents or hobble them in their tracks on one side of a wall, the horse that you can place in a corner and start scoring L positions like you would in chess, or a joker that lets you get another piece that maybe you couldn't have gotten before by making the piece a while. But you have to choose it, of course, before you actually start to place it during the draft phase of the game. And so it adds this extra layer of complexity to a very simple, basic game that most everybody has played before. If you do not like abstract strategy games, this is still probably not going to be in your wheelhouse. If you don't like the idea that sometimes if you don't place correctly, the thing can fall apart in your hands, yeah, that's not super fun if you're not into that. But for us as our group, we actually like that. I think that was kind of a nice little addition to not only making sure your placement is correct, but how you place them is also correct. And for the most part, it's not super difficult to figure out how to do it as well. But it's one of those things that I recommend you start to mess with and, mess, mess, mess with and fiddle with before you get into a real game of Pola. Uh, this game is going to have, I believe, a four-player variant, which is what I saw on the site, which I think would be pretty cool. And the thing I also like about these type of abstract games is you can always build onto them. You can add unique extra dice that have actions, you could start playing a huge, huge game of Pola and change the rules. This has uh, infinite ways of replayability and unique creativity that you can add to this game. Players can make their own rules or add their own unique dice onto the wild. And overall, it's a lot of fun. So for those abstract players out there that want something that's handheld, can play anywhere and take anywhere, then Pola is definitely one I would suggest you take a look at. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Pola, the Magnetic Game by Blaster Light. There's a link down below in the description if you'd like to take out more, take more of a peek at this game and see if it's something that you'd be interested in. You can also check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaway, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're going to run short on our game, The Mind, uh, not The Mind, The Mind Bug Beyond Evolution, which is currently up for giveaway there for the next couple days. And you like our live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST and on Whatnot at 6.30 p.m. PST as well, Unfiltered Gamer. You can find us there. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to uh, tic-tac-toeing with you next time.